Hey, Coop, thanks for, uh, thanks for making some time for us today. Um, I remember you walked through with us kind of before the season started, all the emotions you went through over the summertime, and obviously we all know your journey and, and things. Um, now, now that you are approaching the middle of the season, you know, I remember you talked about how that fight over the summertime for you would have been for nothing if you guys don't accomplish your goals. You're three weeks into the season. Do you still talk – frequently as a team about those end goals or are you guys so caught up in just the week to week day to day stuff that you know what you're working toward but you don't really verbalize that stuff um you know I feel like you do get caught up when it comes to the season of week to week you know you want to put all your efforts and energy towards just that one week and towards our opponent that we're playing so it's kind of hard to think of the season as a whole um, but we, we we try to make sure we don't take anything for granted. You know, we don't want to take a week uh, for granted. We don't take a game for granted, a day for granted. Um, so we we try to stay focused in the week for our opponent, but also we don't miss the big picture and and uh, miss what this thing is really about. I'm curious if you've heard from anybody, um, whether it's a former teammate, former player, or or maybe just somebody notable we wouldn't necessarily associate with, uh, about wearing the Block O jersey. Has anybody said something to you that's been particularly cool or memorable about that? Um, no, not really. Uh, I mean, a lot of people have reached out to me and said, congratulations. Um, Nobody notable, not like a, a LeBron James or something. So, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I wouldn't say that. So, <laughs> okay, cool. All right. And we, we have quite a few hands raised and, and only about 10 minutes with Coop. So, if we could just keep it to one question, that'd be great. Uh, we'll go next to Tony Gerdeman from Buckeye Scoop. Tony. Hey, Jonathan, I'm interested in your viewpoint over the years of Nicholas Petit Frere's growth. I assume. Early on in his career, you could probably do whatever you wanted, and then at some point, things got a little bit more difficult for you. Yeah, no, Nick, Nick is a great player. Uh, and I've definitely seen him growing throughout the years. Uh, he's really developed into an amazing uh, tackle for us. And I, obviously, you can see there on the field everything that he's doing. So, you know, I'm really proud of him. Thank you. All right, next up, Austin Ward, Letterman Row. Austin. Coop, I know that uh, Coach Jay is never uh, truly satisfied and always pushing you guys. So where does he want to see more uh, out of that pass rush uh, this week or the next couple of weeks? Um, just for us to just get better, basically, with our hands and our and our get-offs and stuff. Um, you know, he's never satisfied. And I feel like you need that in the coach, though. Um, he's really hard on us, and we're really hard on ourselves. We want to be better. We want to do better. Um, and he'll get us there. Thanks, Coop. All right, next up, Bill Landis from The Athletic. Bill. Hey, Coop, uh, along those lines, um, I think sometimes people just look at sacks, and if that number's low, they figure the pass rush wasn't good. Um, I, I know that the, you know, those two things can be separate. So, so how do you feel about the pressure you all are generating, even in a game like Rutgers, where you look up at the end and there's only one sack? Yeah, I think we're generating a lot of pressure, uh, honestly. I'm, if you can look back on that game and actually watch the D-line, we're getting there. Um, we're definitely affecting his passing, and uh, we're, our pass rush is getting there. It's just the ball is coming out quick. You know, I think people are really starting to uh, realize the kind of defensive line that we have, and they're not dropping back passing or holding onto the ball very long. Um, but we're still making an, making an effect the best way that we can. I will go next to Nathan Baird from Cleveland.com. Nathan. Yeah, Jonathan, maybe kind of along those same lines. When you're playing a quarterback like uh, the one you're about to play this week, um, Michael Penix in a couple weeks, or I guess you could say it's even about Adrian Martinez, how does that make your job more difficult as a defensive end? Uh, it just it just means that we have to be even more disciplined in our rush. Um, we can't run upfield create gaps for those guys. They're really good quarterbacks and they know how to use their feet as well. So we got to make sure we keep them in the pocket where we want them um, and then get to them. At the end of the day, you know, that's the goal. We have to get to them and make sure we're affecting him and hitting him. So 
we can't let them get out of the pocket and let them scramble around because that's when uh, defenses start to break down. So I put that on us. All right, we'll go next to Bill Rabinowitz, Columbus Dispatch. Bill. Hi, Jonathan. Uh, what do you remember about two years ago in College Park, that, that scare? And what have you seen so far from Maryland? Uh, I do remember that scare two years ago very well. Um, Maryland was a good team back then, and uh, I feel like they're, they're even a better team now. You know, it's not – it's not like it's just Maryland. We watch them every week. They're a really good football team, and we're going to treat them that way. So in order to give them the respect that they deserve, that means going hard in practice and playing to the best uh, best that we can uh, and focus on this week and focus on them. Right. Thank you. All right, Stephen Means, Cleveland.com. You're up. Stephen. Hey, Jonathan, can you just, like, in your opinion, how do you think Zach Harrison has played this year? I think Zach Harrison is – Play pretty well, honestly. You go back and look at the tape on him. He's doing pretty, he's good. He's doing great things. Um, I feel like he's developing more confidence into himself as the weeks go by. Um, you know, I don't I, I don't really know too much about the outside what they say about him, but as far as his development and what I see him personally, I'm very happy for where he's at um, and the confidence that he's starting to get game in and game out. What's improved the most from his freshman year to now? Just his speed um, and him being confident in himself. I feel like, you know, he's the fastest defense alignment that we have. And you can see that now starting to uh, – you can see that on the field now. And he's a strong guy. He's super tall. Um, he has a great game. And he's a very smart player. You're starting to see that all come together this year. All right, we'll go next to uh, Patrick Murphy from 247. Patrick. Jonathan, you were asked about one sack. You talked about the, the pressure you're getting on the quarterback. In a game like that, when you look back at the film, what are you looking at in terms of, hey, we played well, even if the stats don't show it? What things do you do you see that said, hey, we played, we played the way we wanted? Um, we just see how fast we are getting there. You know, the ball comes out quick, I feel like, for us when we play quarterbacks and and uh, teams, because they respect our pass rush, you know, you don't see a lot of drive back passing. And we're getting there and the ball's coming out quick. Um, but you take those games and you see how you can get better, how you can beat the offensive lineman faster. You know, what else could we have done to affect the game? How are we playing in the run game? Are we stopping the run well enough? And, um, you know, you can, you, you can always improve your game. So it doesn't. It doesn't just stop like, oh, we had a good game or, oh, we're having a good rush. Like, no, there's always something that we can work better at and get better at. All right, got time for two more. Uh, we'll go to Tim May and Spencer Holbrook. So we'll start with Tim and then finish with Spencer. Tim, you're up. Thank you very much, Mike. Uh, Jonathan, uh, how do you define a trick play? How nauseating was it to see an offensive lineman catch a throwback pass and score basically untouched the other night? And this – how much more aware are you guys right now of those kind of things than you were a week ago, if you follow my drift? Yeah, uh, Rutgers threw a lot of trick plays at us. Um, it's hard to get prepared for those and uh, see those throughout the week. Um, I feel like when it comes to a trick play, you have to just go back to your rules, you know, and you see fast away, you have to kind of stay back and expect the reverse or expect anything coming back to you. Um, I think we're going to look at more trick plays this week just to have a better understanding of them and know what to do in those type of situations. But, you know, there's only so much you can do um, against a trick play because there's so many different things that's going on. And especially with a team like Rutgers who ran them really well, yeah. um, you have to be able to kind of just adjust, you know, play football. Thanks, man. Thank you. All right. And the last question for Coop, we'll go to Spencer Holbrook from Letterman Row. Spencer. Coop against Penn State, you guys extended a drive with a penalty, um, maybe maybe a questionable penalty, and then there was a drive extended against Rutgers with a penalty. Uh, you as a two-time captain now, how are you addressing that with the guys, and, and what do you see from the discipline side right now that, that makes you think you guys are going to get that corrected? Um, yeah, to be honest, we got to be better. Um, a defense as a whole, you know, we got to be better. We uh, can't have unnecessary disciplines where they go give them 15 yards on – any kind of calls, offsides, face mask, uh, pass interference, all those calls, you know, and then eventually they lead to scores. Um, I feel like for the past two games, we really haven't finished 
um, as strong as we're supposed to. You know, I feel like we come out strong, but we don't really finish. And uh, that's something I'm trying to uh, talk to my guys about because it starts with the captains, the leaders of the defense. Um, and we have to figure out a way, figure out what's going on to where we're not finishing um, these games and we're going to get it fixed. I know that.